did. So can we have uh, a motion to approve the agenda? Yes, yeah, so moved. That's done. And a seconder? Second. Okay, that's David seconding. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Do we need to uh, vote? Let's vote. I. I'm voting unanimous. Yeah. Yes. Okay, and adoption of the minutes. Uh, we've got the minutes. Have everybody had a chance to uh, go through them? I think that is a yes. I had a quick scan, yep. Okay, so uh, a motion to approve the uh, minutes. Jeff. Okay, and seconder. Is there a second? David. David, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Let's move on. Public comments. Wait, Will, Anybody? are you off camera on purpose? Did you mention that? Yeah. I'm. Oh, uh, the 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 reason uh, the reason I'm I'm going off camera is I've got a I'm on an iPad and I have to zip Sorry, off. I uh, okay, and so uh, the the next item is uh, any comments from uh, the community? I don't see anybody's here. No. Okay, let's move on. Um, council referrals is Daniel here. Yes, I'm here. Great. So, um, Daniel, can you take us through this? Uh, I have just a quick presentation it's in the um, in the agenda, but I'll just talk you through it if that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Just does that work? Can you see my PowerPoint? Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. So I have a rezoning application that's been referred from council. It's a re rezoning application for a zone that's known as Area One of CD18, which is the Arbutus Ridge comprehensive development zone on the west side of Bowen Island. Um, and so D Daniel, that's uh, yeah. the little, uh, the top of the orange, The there's two area ones, actually three area ones on, on that uh, map there. So uh, yeah. we're, we're looking at the uh, one on the left, top left. So in this CD18 zone, do you see my cursor? Have I, yep. Oh wait, yeah, there's three different areas that are made up of the area one. Yep. Um, and then area three is essentially zoned for park and open space. Um, so some of this, if you're familiar with the area, the west side playground is going in on the bottom. Um, and so there's a parcel here that's been given to the municipality as part of that. And I think some of the area up at the top is as well come to the municipality and the rest will as part of various subdivisions. Um, area two is rezoned for what's called, it's like a cottage residential development. And then area one is where the then sort of the balance and the bulk of the um, sort of like the residential development as part of the rezoning is to take place. Yep. So some of these lots have been created, you'll see, and some are still in subdivisions or have not yet been created, but they were all rezoned to allow that residential development in those three different pockets of area one. Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, so this is then ortho photo. I think this photo dates from 2018. Um, and what you can kind of see in the light gray is where some of the lots have been created. So the road up to the top, which is labeled Joan Audrey Lane, um, if you drive by, is built and exists on site. Two of the lots in this little area, one portion, have been created. Two little lots um, off of Joan Audrey Lane. And then at this cul-de-sac as well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, have been um, created as well. This parcel has been created and, and given to the municipality as well as the park at the bottom and parkland at the top of the hill as well has come to the municipality. Um, and these are then par parent parcels remaining for future subdivision and future parkland dedication, as well as this parcel on this, this other bottom part. Um, so area one of CD18 permits detached dwelling. It permits up to 38 detached dwelling within the zone. Um, and then it permits open space and public trails and uses accessory to principal uses and domestic agriculture. 
And then crucially for this application, the zone does not permit accessory residential use, which is what the land use bylaw defines as secondary suites, either attached or detached secondary suites, so this accessory residential use term. <clears throat> so for council's um, review and then various committees review, I, I took a look to see, okay, what other zones in Bowen do not permit secondary suites, do not permit accessory residential use. Um, and so going through it, what I found is predominantly, it's the case that they're not permitted in places within Snug Cove. Um, so Artisan Square um, in the Cates Hill where the, the townhouse development is. Um, in places of Cowan Point surrounding the golf course with denser development or in the, the um, Snug Cove housing Fox Cove Lane development um, or in the as part of the pub rezoning are places that don't permit um, accessory residential use. Um, so I pulled the official community plan has, a, this is in a comprehensive development area of the official community plan. So it has a special designation and special language around it. Um, so it sort of has a description of what this development will look like. Clusters of detached residential dwellings interspersed by open space trails and natural areas and a neighborhood park. And talks about the cottage residential development. There's then a specific policy that relates to this area, talking again about it be clustered to minimize environmental impact, encourage the retention of natural vegetation. 38 residential dwellings in clusters in addition to the cottage residential development. So the, the proposed application is to permit the accessory residential use throughout area one. Um, area one currently is active at subdivision applications for the majority of the lots. So as we saw, some of them have been created, some are under applications and some are still outstanding. Um, but our initial review is that of the 38 lots, 15 would be large enough for detached secondary suites and the others would permit um, attached secondary suites. Yep. So that then was the end of my presentation and then I'm open for any discussion. Yep. Um, I saw, uh... First of all, I saw Don had a, a comment in the, the uh, chat. Uh, Don, could you? Uh, no, it, it, and it was immediately answered. So thank you. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, why? Did, did, uh, why was the this area um, not designated to have um, secondary suites in the beginning? I've gone through the, the application material and the council reports, and I wasn't able to date to find any reference to why it was excluded. I had thought initially, my initial sort of hypothesis was that the application had started at a time when um, the municipality did not allow secondary suites. So we only allowed secondary suites in 2008 or 2009, I believe the bylaw was adopted. And I thought if this application was happening in parallel, that it would have made sense that it was excluded and you know the developer wouldn't have wanted to sort of be tied up in, with the secondary suites conversation. But this was actually completed in, I think, 2013. So it was a few years after. Um, okay. And so I'm not aware, like, I couldn't see any reports. It wasn't like it was included at first and then, you know, council specifically excluded it or, you know, sort of that history I don't have. And council had asked for more information on the history before I come back. And so I'll make sure to do a little bit more, more sleuthing. Yeah. Um, any other questions from uh, committee members? John has one. I just, I just want to go back to to my comment earlier. I thought, I thought you'd answered it by saying that the uh, that the buildings were were of such a size that they didn't allow or warrant uh, additional suites. Where the other, where the other fifteen do. Uh, did I misunderstand that? Um, so it's of the lots that are proposed. So we we regulate, I guess, secondary suites that the lot is bigger than a certain size. It's permitted a detached secondary suite. So if it's larger than 0.36 of a hectare, which is about um, 0.9 of an acre, it permits a detached secondary suite. And if it's smaller than that, then the suite has to be attached in part of the house. Okay. Um, and so of the current subdivisions and current lots, you know, we counted up that there were 15 that would permit the detached secondary suite and the rest would be attached. And this zone, I'll just say sort of the same way, has a, has a floor area maximum. So there's a maximum size of building essentially that's permitted in the zone. 
And so if somebody, the way it's written now, somebody wanted to build a secondary suite, it would come out of that total. So they wouldn't be allowed permitted like additional size of building, but, but they could allocate some of it to a secondary suite. Thank you. A question about secondary suites. Um, uh, you know, one, one of the things I'm seeing in, in our community is even though we've allowed secondary suites, uh, there's still lots of people in the community that are having a heck of a time uh, finding um, uh, a place to live. And my understanding, lo looking around my neighborhood, uh, uh, a, a significant number of those secondary suites are not going to uh, 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 residents. They're, they're going to Airbnb and, and uh, short-term uh, uh, vacation rental. And uh, I'm concerned about doubling the, uh, um, uh, the, the number of, uh, of households in this area um, with not much uh, um, to say about helping the community needs. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm seeing that the developer will get uh, a huge windfall in profit here from uh, uh, being able to uh, uh, increase the um, uh, the value of a lot, individual lot, by um, having either building a secondary suite or, or selling it to somebody with the knowledge that they could build a secondary suite. So uh, the, uh, I interrupted you as you were about to reply, Daniel. So um, yeah, I mean, I was gonna say in terms of short-term rentals, it's like we permit that. As, as an accessory use that's called residential guest accommodation. Yeah. Um, it's not permitted in this CD zone and the application didn't propose that it be permitted. So if, if council allowed secondary suites in this zone, it wouldn't be permitted to do accessory or residential guest accommodations. They wouldn't be permitted to um, do short-term rental of the, the units. Now it's possible that you know through it, they're gonna ask, well, we want to be treated like every other zone. And so we should have the same same regulations, but but as currently the application is, that wouldn't be permitted. So, um, and so I know it's something like when we talked with the housing advisory committee, um, and at the first council meeting, it's something that came up as well. This idea, of, you know, is this creating big land lift for the developer? And I said, well, it's sort of a discussion, I guess, in terms of when we permitted secondary suites in two thousand and eight or nine, and when we permitted detached secondary suites in twenty sixteen. They were permitted like across the island in all zones and it was viewed by council as you know this is like a community benefit this is to provide the type of housing that we want to see so we're rezoning all these zones and all these cd zones to permit it versus if it's like a developer coming with an application to upzone their land and we're looking for an entity contribution and i said it's sort of a it, it is an outstanding question it's not clear in my mind and you know, I think council needs to have that discussion in terms of like, what is this type of application? Is this like we're increasing housing choices in this CD zone that benefits the island? And it's kind of just like when we did it for suites for everywhere. Or is this, this is more like a developer coming forward with an application and we're looking for amenity contribution. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. Um, Bonnie, did you, did I see your hand hovering? Um, I have a lot of comments, but um, I, I also have my staff hat where I can comment. Um, so I really, you know, value the committee's input. I just have a question for Daniel about, um, you know, keeping with, I guess it was the OCP that you read out about retention of natural vegetation. So I'm just wondering how that might be achieved on um, the lots that, will be slated or potentially will be slated for detached secondary suites, knowing that we do have um, fire smarting, we have all, all those um, you know, concerns about protecting property. So how we can reconcile the retention of natural vegetation when we're putting another dwelling on a lot. Um, I'm just wondering, I'm just, it's just more of a question on how we, how we could do that. Yeah, I mean, I guess the one answer is like changing to allow the secondary suite, um, you know, it's like without changing the, the amount of building permitted in the zone. So it's like, if we permitted it to say, you're allowed accessory residential use, you can have a secondary suite, but the lot coverage would remain unchanged and the floor area remain unchanged. In that case, there's not more 
building on the site. It's just that somebody would say, now I can build a detached secondary suite, whereas before I could build a garage. You know, so, so in that point, it's not increasing, yeah, how much you can build, but it's increasing what you can use it for. That's great. Thank you, Daniel. That's, that's great. And then to, um, I understand that we would be looking for um, proof of, you know, water, um, as water has been an issue in, the, in that area in the past. Um, and um, yeah, so just with that, like I, I didn't have it in this presentation, but when I presented to council, I sort of said there were a number of items that staff were looking for more information on, one of which was water supply and then yeah. things like hydrants and septic and stormwater management um, yeah. that we would expect to get more details from to bring to council when it comes back to council. So yeah, water, and it's been referred to the um, King of Bay Advisory Committee for their- that, That's really great. And especially stormwater management, that's yeah. really topical uh, today and moving forward with climate, climate change. Um, and also too, because King Edward Bay Creek is not uh, wrapper applicable. Um, so it's not riparian area applicable. Um, regulation because it's non-fish bearing. And I know years ago, people tried to reestablish salmon in the creek, but it just it just dries up um, So in the summer. So, but saying that in the past, in the way that development was done in the past on Bowen is things were cleared, things were kind of done differently back in the day. Um, and, and so there has been substantial vegetation alteration around King Edward Bay Creek. So we don't want siltation entering into the marine event, um, environment, especially in King Edward Bay. It's, it's been, you know, Adam Taylor, our diver, resident diver has, has said the biodiversity in that bay is amazing. So I guess, you know, just stormwater management plans, you know, with changing climate, definitely need updating at times. And um, I think that's really important. Just today it's highlighted. Um, and also to just back in the day, as I remember it, um, being here working when the um, density was um, for this area was increased. I believe uh, density was increased back uh, whenever this came to council. So um, there is a potential for increased density. You know, it could be affordable housing, which is fantastic. Um, but with that, and it's out of the purview of this committee, perhaps there are tax, um, there are um, stresses to our natural um, assets in the area, our beaches, plus Windjammer Road itself does not have very good pedestrian um, safety. So I just, I just wanted to raise those potential concerns as well when you increase the density it already was increased as long as natural resources can support that then you know I, I am in favor of of the proposal um McKaylee I saw you but you put something in the comments uh, uh can you talk to that uh, just some of us aren't, aren't uh, following the uh, uh comments so Okay, um, I just wanted to mention that the Scotch broom have been um, um, obviously detected in that area and actively removed in the playground at the at the bottom of Joan Audrey Way. And when soils are disturbed, there's a potential high potential for Scotch broom to be um, invasive and to take over an area. And so I wanted to know if there was some consideration putting put into the revegetation after construction for the exposed soils or disturbed areas to make sure that Scotch broom doesn't take over in that in that location. And then the other thing that I wanted to mention is the municipal lands up at the top of Joan Audrey Way. There is significant runoff from some of the trails that go through there that are causing sedimentation into um, King Edward Brook. And so I um, just wanted to bring the Muni's attention to that and maybe um, um, there should be, uh, when we're coming up with a plan for that, to have some consideration on, on how to manage those trails a little bit better. Yeah, I, I think, go ahead, Daniel, you're going to respond or? Um, no, just thank you, and I've taken notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing that's come, come to mind 
and you know, we, we look at today as, as uh, what's happening with weather and uh, we're seeing a tremendous amount of uh, runoff. And when I'm seeing that we're talking about uh, increasing density, that often means uh, more, more driveways, more, um, uh, more roof space uh, 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 instead of uh, um, natural soils and that kind of thing. And my concern is, is with a doubling of the number of uh, potential households in that there's going to be more um, environmental impact from uh, uh, the building. And one of the things that uh, I would think would be a nice thing to add as a requirement for, for this kind of thing is permeable surfaces. And so I think that's, that's a, an important aspect. I, I, I've got a bunch of things to say, but I don't want, I don't want to be uh, dominating. So uh, Jeff, do you have any comments to add? Actually, David's got his hand up, uh, so okay. I think he's, he's okay. ready to do. Hey, I've got uh, just some general comments. I mean, I'm, um, I'm, I'm in generally um, supportive of this um, for the reasons that others have suggested. Um, and, you know, we need the housing and so on. But I also, um, um, you know, thinking of some of the points that Will has raised. So I wandered through the whole area yesterday in the pouring rain to have a look at how it was uh, there's a bunch of new construction, new stuff being ripped up, and uh, and I had a look at all the all the creeks, how they're handling it, and um, interestingly, they're handling it incredibly well. Um, I, I just want to, I guess I, it's just a comment that I feel the um, the developer has done really good work on the the drainage and the infrastructure as well as the trails. So I, I just sort of, it's just a comment. That's all. My other comment, though, and it doesn't really have anything to do with this development so much. Um, it's, it's distressing to see at a time when we know we need to keep our forests as intact as possible, so much of it being ripped down. And, and um, so this isn't a comment on this particular development. You know, this is done. But I just wonder about our thinking um, longer term of how we want to protect our existing green infrastructure and not see um, additional development all over the place. It's just a, it's really sad to see so many trees being ripped down uh, when we know we need to keep them as much as possible. So, and, and uh, but important, that's not a comment against this. It's all been approved, They're doing what's approved. So it's, it's thinking about how we look to the future, that's all. And, and some comments that I think this developer's done pretty, pretty good work in terms of drainage and trails. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, David. Jeff, do you have anything to uh, add? I don't, I don't actually, beyond what people have already identified, and uh, sounds like, you know, water and runoff sedimentation are the kind of the two main issues that may be within the purview um, of our committee. I, I was wondering, uh, is there something around the climate lens? Maybe that's kind of separate from what David's mentioned with deforestation, but, um, you know, I guess this is an increase in density that um, that's... Um, that's driving distance from the cove, but uh, not all density can be in the cove, of course. So um, uh, that's just a comment. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've, I've got a few more. I'm just seeing if anybody else has a hand up. Uh, so I'm not, uh, uh, one, of, one of the things I'm wondering about this and it's following Jeff and, and what David have, have said is, um, is this the best location to increase density in on Bowen Island, when we look at um, the, uh, uh, the the documents that David has uh, uh, has uh, got us to look at from uh, Metro Vancouver about uh, ways of, of uh, uh, reducing carbon uh, use and, and, and emissions, and um, you know the, the the community has said we should focus more on density close to the cove or in the cove. And um, so I'm wondering if this is the best place to increase density. Um, and, and, and this is entirely from the, uh, uh, the environmental protection uh, uh, mandate of our, our, our uh, uh, committee. Uh, 
I'm not uh, going. To, I'm not saying uh, uh, people don't need houses and that kind of thing. But again, the question is where. And the other thing, I I, I take a, a a little bit of. Um, um, I differ with the, the financial implications uh, uh, statement in in the the handout that we got. That really, there's not much uh, 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 financial burden for, for, for the municipality. But I've got to think about uh, uh, increased road maintenance, uh, uh, increased uh, uh, demand for uh, fire and, and uh, um, uh, ambulance service at that end of the island, uh, 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 parking in the cove, which will, a lot of those people will, will commute and, and that kind of thing. Um, increased GHG uh, emissions. Uh, and so I'm not sure this is the, this is the right place for increasing density. So um, unlike other members of the committee that show support, I'm not sure I support this. Um, <clears throat> Don, well, I was just, I was just. I mean, I'm not sure how to how to follow that. Uh, my first thought was we need more asphalt, but I I won't go there. <laughs> the uh, the but but if the horse is out of the barn and this has already been approved and it's pretty well on its way, I get that. Uh, but but I thought I thought David's question was was an interesting one that we might want to consider at some point. Which is which is you know how many how many trees does do we want on the island, you know and and where where's the trade off between development and and uh, ecology, you know I, and I think that's a great question, uh, that would address you know what you're talking about in terms of this project and future projects. Well, I'm I'm not sure the cat the the the, the cat's out of the bag here yet. Okay. Um, because we're we're asked to, whether we support uh, a, a doubling of uh, mm. of uh, density in in this this area, and uh, um, my question is 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 uh, um, no problem with with the, the development going on as it is, but I'm not sure. I I see this as a a, a place to um, um, add. Uh, 34 or 38 uh, extra um, households. And so uh, um, that, that's my, my, my question. The other thing I, I noticed, I went to the OCP and looked at the, um, uh, the, the uh, what's it called? Uh, Schedule two uh, donor lands density uh, and eligible lands. And I'm not sure looking at the map, I, I, it, it doesn't have the detail I, I need to notice if um, this property is in the donor uh, designation uh, area that uh, could um, sell or give um, density to uh, uh, developments in and around the cove. I'll show you the map. But uh, that, that's uh, map C2, or 2C. So Daniel, I'm, I'm just wondering, is it in the, that, that area? My recollection, Will, is that it, when adopted in 2011, that it was a donor, and that as part of the rezoning in 2013, it was removed from that map. OK. Uh, any more comments? Uh, yeah, just, uh, Marty okay. and David. Um, yeah. Daniel, could, could you come back to the uh, density transfer discussion? Um, it comes up in these kinds of discussions. Has the density transfer process ever been used? No. To the best of your knowledge, why has it never been used? 
I don't know if I can say for, for everything. I know I've had discussions with people sometimes where it happens that they are a donor eligible site. Um, I think there's not a mechanism set up that it would work and that in a lot of places it doesn't make almost sense for people. And that it sort of tries to treat a unit as a unit. Um, whereas if you're a site that says, well, you could subdivide and you could have two 10 acre parcels instead of one, or you could transfer it somehow, find somebody in the cove that you could sell a hypothetical unit to, to build an additional attached dwelling. Well, it, it doesn't work out the same as a, you know, instead I could have a five acre or a 10 acre lot. You know, it, the value is not the same. Yeah. So in 10 years or so, it has never been used. So I think that tells you something about the relevance of, uh, of the discussion in, in the area. The other point I just wanted to confirm was if this were uh, approved, what is the maximum number of additional um, detached secondary suites that we could see? Um. So it's, it's 38 dwellings, and then we had done the math at 15 detached secondary suites. Now, some of that could change because it's like, well, you know, the subdivision, they could withdraw the application and have a new application that has a larger number of higher, of larger lots and more smaller lots, I guess, in theory. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah. And just to the, I guess, just maybe to David's point, and Will's a bit about overall development. In a sense, it's like this zone, you know, permits 38 detached dwellings, permits 38 lots. Development's underway. But the, the subdivision that was completed at the top of Joe Audrey Lane, we received building permits for those lots almost simultaneously, like almost immediately upon the subdivision was complete and we got building permit applications for all of them. Like almost right away. Maybe not all of them, but you know, it was a lot for us. Like often traditionally on Bowen, a subdivision is completed and it's like people buy them for their kids to build a house on or them to build their dream home. And it's like, we'll get one and then next year maybe we'll get another one. And maybe, you know, it takes years for it to build out. And instead for this subdivision and just current building climate on Bowen, it was like immediately we got building applications for many of them. So I would expect like if this rezoning application doesn't go ahead, the, the 38 lots will still be created and probably before too long and probably there'll be development on all 38 lots. And they'll probably build somewhere close to their floor area permitted. Um, so the question for the committee is sort of, do you want an additional dwelling unit within that same amount of building? Yeah. McKaylee, I saw you flicker your hand there. David's hand has been up for a while, so I'll oh, let him go. Yeah. Oh, sorry, David. Okay, thank you, Will. Uh, just uh, Maureen raised, raised one of the points because Will, it's not it's not a, an another an, it's not a doubling. It's not from thirty eight to another thirty eight. It's you know potentially fifteen. Um, I, I know I, you know just speaking generally. Um, I mean, I appreciate your points, Will. Uh, is this the right place? Uh, probably not. But um, you know that was those are decisions that have been taken. I think. I think we need to look at those kinds of decisions going forward, but I don't, you know, I, I to um, Don's point, I think, you know, it's out of the barn here. And I think it would only be fair to um, um, uh, to support the, and, and useful for affordable housing to, uh, you know, allow these additional 15 that might or might not happen over time. Um, so um, yeah, those are just my points. I, I, I agree with you, Will, probably not the best place, but that, that decision's been done. Thanks. Okay, McKaylee, yeah, I think you're next. Um, I wanted to ask about the attached um, secondary residences. Um, sometimes in some of the projects that I've been working on, attached can mean, mean through via a breezeway. And so they'll have like a little studio that's attached through this breezeway. Is there, is there any way to reduce the amount of, I guess, because that increases the impermeable surfaces and the idea behind the attached dwellings is that it doesn't increase that impermeable surface. Is there any way to sort of um, account for those things as well? Yeah, I mean, our building definition, so what is considered one building can mean 
something connected by a breezeway and located not more than three meters apart. Um, so it's like, yeah, that would be permitted and that would be considered attached. Um, the way that we govern you know, permeable services is, is the lot coverage regulation for the zone. Okay. So it's set at, it's 25% right now. And so that would be all buildings and structures would fit within 25%. Okay. Um, and so council could, you know, in theory council could reduce that. Um, you know, as part of a part of a rezoning. Um, and then do green roofs count as impermeable or permeable surfaces? It's all just part of building. So it would all be included. Daniel, just to clarify, um, this uh, this rezoning application is requesting that all properties um, be eligible for secondary suites, correct? Yeah. That, that's where I got my doubling of the number yeah. of households uh, on, on, uh, on this uh, development. So uh, that's just to clarify that I wasn't saying uh, that... Uh, uh, I, I perceive that there'd be uh, double the number of buildings on the on the properties. Oh, thanks, Will. Good point. Yep. So, um, any, any more discussion? So, um, Steph, can you read the uh, the motion? Yeah. Do you want to see what I? I hope I. Please. Everything. You're no always so good. Please. speak up if your points were missed. Is that shared? It's thinking about it. Yeah, you're all frozen. It's actually quite warm in here. Joke, joke. It's still... Um, Thinking about it. It seems to be sharing a blank screen, maybe. Oh, here it comes. Can you read that out loud to us, Steph? Uh, um, that, that, okay, so that the committee support or do not support rezoning application RZ03 2020, area one of CD18, I read this ridge with the following comments that permeable surfaces be prioritized, that water availability be confirmed, that stormwater management, including water runoff to cause sediment in King Edward Brook be addressed, that Windjammer Road be maintained to sustain increased population, that pedestrian safety be addressed with increased traffic in this area, that it be confirmed that local amenities, for example, beaches can sustain the increased population, the parking in the cove be increased as a possible result of increased commuter population. Um, I not wasn't really clear on density transfer or amenities. Yeah. Sort of something. That yeah. I'm not clear on the last bullet. Yeah. Um, I, I think the, the, the parking one came from me and I wouldn't support increasing parking in the cove. Okay. Um, I, I think it would we'd have to look at alternatives to, to parking, uh, uh, more public uh, uh, transportation, um, uh, you know, alternatives to uh, driving your car to the cove to park to uh, uh, jump on the ferry. I, I think, okay. again, this is something uh, uh, we've got to move away from. We do have the park and ride at the, at the fire hall that yep. is extremely underutilized. Um, you know, the signage is there, maybe promoting that over time anyway, just, and just a reminder um, that it's there. Regarding the public transportation, this is right on the bus route. Yeah. Right on the bus route. Okay, so um, maybe just communicate it or just get rid of that? I think. A yeah. really good bus stop right in front. <laughs> okay, the public route. transportation be promoted or something? True. Is that McKaylee? Uh, I wanted to say that although it's on the bus route, it doesn't, the buses stop running at eight o'clock. So in our situation, my husband can't take the bus, you know, even though it's just right down the road. Um, 
the hours need to be extended for the existing bus, bus routes. And also, I just, I always want to think about our ferry capacity, right? I know I'm out of the realm purview of this committee, but it is connected and, you know, yeah, it, it, it's, it's an issue. So I know there's work and it's outside of our influence, generally speaking, but, you know, all these, all these things have impact and livability can be compromised on our island um, with increased density, so with the ferry, with respect to the ferry. Yeah. I guess the, the other part of that, that story too um, is the uh, increased number of people that are um, working from home and they need things like uh, make sure they have uh, dependable power, depend, uh, um, high speed internet and all those things um, to make it uh, uh, possible for them to uh, live in that, that spot and not take the ferry as often and uh, do as much car driving. So. I do have a question. Um, I guess it's more about kind of a, a point of order around our kind of scope and area of responsibility for our committee. And we haven't had this, at least in my experience with the community, we haven't had too many um, you know, development referrals that have, that have come to us. And you know, the, the motion as it's written is asking for us to you know, support or not support the, the rezoning application. And you know, I, while we've talked about many environment and climate action components here, there are other elements that we've touched on already, you know, the ferry, for example, transportation issues, and those aren't uh, within our area of you know, scope of our committee at all. And 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 I'm and I'm just wondering, you know, another element could be, and I'm sure which um, you know others will be faced with is, um, you know, is it fair to hold to not allow this for this neighborhood when the rest of the west side of the island is available or other properties have that potential for um, a secondary dwelling. Um, so, you know, is, is this, do we need to be declaring our support or non-support or offering our comments back to, you know, planning and council for future consideration? Can I comment just from my experience on committees um, and from a staff perspective is that I think it's a, you know, we are, we do have terms of reference for each committee, um, but I think it's very valuable to staff. I don't think we have to be locked into a box. I think that that is a problem in our sustainable or our, our paradigm, you know, sort of as government, we tend to silo things. And I think, you know, we, everything's connected. So, um, I really truly believe that. So I think that these comments are helpful for staff and, you know, will they make it into, you know, quoted into a, a, pay, uh, a report to council? I don't know. That will be Daniel's, Daniel's purview there, but um, or under his purview. But, but I think it's important. I mean, I think we're being asked a question. So I think it is sort of being clear on where we stand. But I think all these comments are valuable and, you know, it, yeah, their thoughts and we put it out there. They are concerns from our, our group. So that's that's just my take. Thanks. I think just just to add to what Bonnie said, I, I tend to view it, I guess, and councils can correct me, but it's like council refers it to a committee to hear what the committee thinks. You know, partly thinking, okay, what does the what's the purview of the committee? But I do think council's also interested in hearing from you know the people on the committee who are on committees because they have various expertise and knowledge and, and whatever else. So I think, I think, yeah, having general comments is fine too, rather than wanting people to constrain themselves and saying, well, I'm only gonna comment on this part of it, but having that sort of bigger view is, is helpful for council to hear from more people and more viewpoints. Okay, and Maureen, you've got your hand up. Yeah, um, just uh, to support what Daniel and, and Bonnie said, I. I as a counselor, I find this to be to be helpful, and uh, 
if if you weren't thinking about sort of the environmental issues in the context of you know, housing affordability and carrying capacity for the island and all those kinds of things, I, I would be worried. Um, but just specifically to this, this list, I wonder if we could add um, something along the lines of uh, that the unavailability of these um, secondary suites for short-term rental uh, be emphasized. Just going out the gate, I want it to be really clear to any potential owner that you know, that's you're not going to be paying your mortgage through um, vacation rentals. Unavailability is an ugly word. If somebody's got a what about like pro um, uh, prohibition, that's even stronger. That's <laughs> even harsher. Um, yeah. um, unpermitted. Unpro that's even worse. <laughs> um, <laughs> that these secondary suites are not available for short-term rental. That's better. Yeah. Or what about not being available is clear or clearly communicated? Or confirmed? No, just let's just go with not be available if everyone else is. Comfortable. Okay, yep. not be available. Will not be good. So we have Will to make that available. a rule. Sure. I mean, the other issues that have come up, uh, uh, this is the third presentation I, I've heard, possibly the fourth, on, uh, on, on this. And um, when it first came up at, at, at Council, the, uh, the question of the lift uh, as has been mentioned was uh, uh, came to mind pretty quickly, um, you know, uh, as a as a benefit for the for the developer, but also for the uh, the potential owners of these of these homes. And uh, the question of affordability, because in our discussion here. We've talked about these detached secondary suites as being affordable. Um, they may not be. So the question I asked at, at, at council was whether there was any possibility that there could be a requirement that they be affordable. And that didn't go really anywhere in the um, in the council discussion that went a little farther in the um, housing advisory uh, committee uh, discussion. And, and I, I think the conclusion was that they would end up being available, but not necessarily affordable, uh, given our current um, what regulations. So something to keep in mind. They could yeah. be very expensive to touch that can suites. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm making that as a, I'm suggesting adding that, um, Steph, just, just to um, bring it up for context. Yeah. I think that's for another committee. Yeah. yeah. I, I think one of the things that we've all, that I, I'm always, going through in my mind is what is the, the mandate of, of the committee I'm on? And, uh, uh, you know, we often step outside of that uh, because we're community members and, and that's important. But uh, I think our recommendations should, should stick with that. I see Bonnie's got her hand up. I, I would support um, the last statement that Councillor Nicholson raised. Because I feel that, you know, whenever there's development, there is environmental degradation to some extent. Um, I think we could agree on that point. You're taking down what was there, you're putting something up, you're hardening, you're whatever. So I think with, you know, but there has, I feel there has to be compromise at times and balancing between development and the environment, natural environment. So I think, I think it's, in, I think it's important um, at the, you know, compromisation of, you know, more vegetation, more, you know, 
water resources being utilized, that there is a primary focus on affordable housing in these units. And that that is important. Yep. And I feel it is connected to environment. So do you wanna include some about justifying the trade-off of degradation or? No, I, th I think. <laughs> I think that's necessary. If, but. if we just uh, redid the, what Maureen had said, and with and we understand uh, Bonnie's reasoning is is solidly behind that. So, but I wouldn't. It not. It's not necessary. So. So people like that here now then. Sure. Could, can we tie it explicitly to the environment so there's a sense of where it, it's coming from? Yep. So, you know, that just given yep. that there is a limited land base and we want whatever housing is developed to be, well, I, to be the community I, need. Yeah, and I think tied into our climate action strategy. So our climate action strategy, like we're trying to retain canopy. We're, we're trying to, you know, mindful of, of, of uh, water, water resources, whatever. I could probably go through our climate action strategy and see how we could tie it in. So keeping with um, provisions within our climate action strategy um, and whereas, you know, development does cause alteration to natural environment um, but at the or given a compromise of you know the need the explicit need for affordable housing on the island the committee supports um, the increase in density um, provided that it's for affordable housing or I don't know if that's a, a tie but that's the best I have at the moment. Maureen, you, do you still have your hand up or is that a new oh, hand? Sorry, that's a yep. leftover hand. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Leftover hand. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and David, you've got, do you have, oh, did no, you have your hand? I don't, except for the wind is picked up and my lights flickered, so I might disappear. We'll see. Okay. I might get squished. I've got branches landing on my roof. Ooh. Picking me out. Do you think this is like a, a recommendation on its own? It seems to have a bunch of whereases. Or like whereas. Can I jump in for a minute? Just, uh, yes. I, I, I don't think you can see my hand. You know, I mean, this is a great discussion, but but what's affordable housing? Can somebody please tell me what that means? Is that mean, is, is 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 affordable housing two thousand dollars a month? Don, it it really depends on context. Uh, okay, um, I, well, I guess that's where I'm trying to go with this. Is that you know, I don't know that we can we can we can guesstimate or we can we can say affordable housing without giving it parameters, and it, it's a really difficult thing to do. Uh, by by limiting the kind of rental that we're proposing, by not being able to do Airbnb, uh, and having to and having to engage in longer term rental, that 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 in itself should make it more affordable. I got I wonder if a way that we could word this is maybe um, something around um, that uh, in consideration of, you know, um, negative effects to, um, you know, environment and climate aspects, that consideration be, be given to offset those impacts through consideration of housing affordability or something like that. Because um, yeah, I, I, I do understand what you're saying, Dawn, is that it's it's easy for us to recommend housing affordability, but how, how does that get implemented? That's for, for someone else, I guess, to figure out. But um, you know, where, 
is it possible we can word this around, um, you know, in, in light of impacts to potential impacts to environment and climate considerations that um, housing affordability be, be considered? I think I, I like you know, where Jeff's going. Um, I think, you know, we have a bunch of things, a bunch of problems we need to solve on the island. And one is uh, protecting the environment in a, in a changing uh, times. And another is affordability. And, and, and so it's suggesting that we want to be more deliberate, making sure we get something when we lose something. Uh, in other words, the, you know, it, it's worth doing rather than just another single family home uh, that we already have plenty of and it doesn't address any of the issues that we need on the island. Nicely said, David. Sorry, I'm not being very helpful. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. I know it's a bit hard. It's like we're writing an essay. Um, point. I think it's kind of like asking for world peace. Yeah, I think Don's right. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that there are like there is there are formulas in place in the municipality for affordability, aren't there? I'm looking to Daniel and Maureen in the housing committee. But there's some sorry, Steph, I didn't hear you. Yeah. Don't we have a formula in place that describes affordability? We have, we have housing. Sorry, go ahead, Dan. Just say in like in our housing agreements, when we require it, you know, that rental housing be affordable, we have a formula that is used that essentially pegs it as a percent below the market rate for housing. You know, so it's like that's our that would be our definition. And whether or not was well, it affordable for everybody, it, it, it's not. It's just how we've defined it. I'm just typing up something in the chat that maybe might you are okay. So see some wording. So if branches you, are falling on my head, I stopped writing yeah. here. Um, let me. I'm gonna stop sharing for a sec to take the spotlight off this. Whereas, um, it's very, it's 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 brief, and maybe more could be said. But uh, I, I guess it was the intention I was looking for initially, but. Yeah, I think that's good, yep. Jeff. Nice short statement. Yep. Could you change effects at the end to impacts? Impacts, yeah. Does that make? That's a friendly amendment. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing is a friendly amendment. <laughs> I, I just like that a comment here. I think this has been a very interesting discussion. I think, you know, um, to actually turn this into action would be quite difficult in this situation. But what we're what we're pointing out is that um, really the whole issue around um, secondary suites and detached secondary suites um, it, it, it needs to be thought through a little bit more carefully. And um, with this exact point, okay, if you're going to dig up a bunch of ground and knock down a bunch of trees, we want to make sure we get something out of it. We're addressing some of the problems on Boeing. Um, it's you know, and and so it's sort of a Kind of future direction. Yeah, and I think I'd, I'd add to that, David, that there are places that it's better to do that than other places. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the idea of uh, getting a population close to a transportation hub like Snug Cove um, takes a whole bunch of uh, carbon out of the equation uh, in, in daily life. And, and that point is made in BC's new uh, climate strategy, whatever it's called, the clean something plan or whatever it is, I forget. Yeah, and I, I, I think that's one of the, the guides for our further development of things in the future is, is, is those, those three papers that uh, you uh, brought to the committee's attention, I think are guidelines that, that, that we should, we, you know, I, I, just as a, a tangent, I think we should be spending some time looking at those and, and harvesting the ones that fit the Bowen situation and uh, make our own uh, uh, mini version. I agree, Will, yeah. So let's, uh, let's move, Any, I think we should move forward now and okay, uh, so look at do, that. Do we want to leave this one about the connectivity or is that just a, I don't, 
films and if there's going to be any headway on the connectivity. Yeah. Can you put the put it up yeah. on the? Which one are we talking about there? Well, I think about there about minimizing traffic or um, commuting. You mentioned connectivity. I, I don't know what could be done around that. I mean, there are good trails here and it connects to the bus system. Um, um, well, you know, so get rid of the connectivity one. I'm not quite sure what could, what we're asking that's different. They've already done a pretty good job of trails and there's more being planned. Oh, sorry. No, I was thinking like a cell tower. I thought oh, that's, that's what I was talking about. Oh, for right. Uh, I don't know. Let's kill that. It, it, it's too it's complex for right now. I think we've got to move forward now. Uh, is anybody strongly opposed to any of those uh, points? I'm wondering about the beaches. I mean, it's how on earth, <laughs> you know, then it be confirmed that local amenities, for example, beaches can sustain, like, how do we measure that? I, you know, what would, what would staff have to do about that? I, hard to imagine. Yeah, and I know that this is something um, that's been brought up in the Parks and Trails Committee. Maybe we can, as a Parks and Trails Committee, can talk more about just, you know, I guess it doesn't go without cost, um, garbage, um, you know, parking. Um, Bone Bay Beach, for example, is definitely at its limit for, for parking. Um, um, so maybe we can address it in, in, in the Parks and Trails Committee. And I think that's where I was going with, you know, there are implications when you increase density to the natural um, amenities or the, the par park amenities in the area. I guess I've got one more point, sorry. I don't know yeah. where that Windjammer Road be maintained to sustain increased population. I'm not sure what we would be doing on Windjammer. I mean, there's, it's true, there's, uh, it'd be nice if there was um, a better walking path, um, but I mean, I walk it regularly. I haven't been killed yet. Um, I, I, I don't know what that means. And I don't know what staff would want, okay, what are we supposed to do with this one? And the pedestrian element is is highlighted in the second one or the next one down anyway. Yeah. One thing that we discussed that isn't reflected there is the um, lot coverage point. And if I understood the discussion that uh, that we had, it sounded as though the committee was supportive of um, not increasing the lot coverage if the secondary suites were built. Is that accurate? Definitely. Good point, Maureen. Yep, agreed. And I mean, that's squarely in our yep. Yep. toolbox yep. to make that kind of recommendation. I know, is that, I thought that was, that the lot's not the lot coverage is not going to be increased is already in place. Sorry. Daniel, you're still here? Yep. Yeah. Sorry, what are you asking for, Maureen? You're saying that we say that, that the lot coverage not be increased? Yes. That's what I'm But isn't saying. that already in place? <clears throat> so the question, Daniel, was is that already in place that, that the lot coverage can't be increased? by us adding a secondary. Uh, right. That's, I mean, that's the current situation. That's not part of the application, but if the committee thinks, well, you know, our support is tied to the fact that the lot coverage is not increasing, then, then say it and like, you know. Yep. Okay. You're um, saying by so any future so change, you wouldn't want it to increase. Yep. So maybe this right there, that one? Sure. That lot coverage not. You know, I want to say prohibited again. So crazy. Not be increased. Just not be increased. Increased. But to, by the addition of a secondary structure. By the addition of. Uh, 
Sure. I got to move downstairs. I'm going to go work in my son's room. <laughs> the skylight just 10 feet away from my head. <laughs> that just mm -hmm. falling on. <laughs> so, so Daniel, hey. when, when we make a, a statement like this, how does that work? Because the applicant could apply for a, a variance, right? I'm just wondering, like, how would a statement like this actually negate the ability for that to occur? Um, I mean, I guess it's more, it's like, it relates more directly to this application, right? So you could see council instead saying, well, we want to encourage more secondary suites, for example, just hypothetically. And so a way to do that would be to increase the lot coverage or increase the building area. So it's more likely people build the secondary suites. We want to see that happen. And so instead this committee says, well, no, we don't like, you know, we're concerned about overall permeability. It's we don't want to see it increase. So like, don't make that part of the consideration. So that, that statement does have value then? Yeah, I think it's value because you've said, no, okay, we, well, we've thought about this and this is a key part of our consideration that it's not being increased. So we don't want to see it increase. But, think, but it, wouldn't in, it wouldn't impede a future council if, if the applicant, if a property owner came forward with a development variance permit, it would not impede their ability to bring it forward to council for a variance. Is no, I mean, nothing, nothing would like, nothing stops somebody from applying. Um, yeah, and then I would imagine like if somebody in the future came, well, hopefully then the whoever's the planner would be looking back and saying, okay, well, it was set at this point and when it was rezoned it, council can like thought about it and some of the feedback from committees was that it not be increased and that would be a consideration of the future application. Okay. Any more discussion? I guess I just had a question about the, the top of this motion stuff. Because I think it still says okay. support slash not support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've got to decide which yeah. we're going to do. <laughs> and looking at uh, what I see on the committee, I think it's a support. Um, With all these comments, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm, you what know, I'm certainly um, still quite concerned about this being the right place, but uh, uh, I, th I think I'm, I'm a minority of one. So <laughs> you can oppose, Will. Yeah, we need a little more of that at the committee level. Yeah. Well, I, Okay, so we ready for a vote? Do we have the motion? Who's going to make the motion? Jeff? I will move it, Jeff. Seconder? David? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And opposed? It's just me. So, carried. All right. Thank you, Daniel. I think we can set you free. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thanks for your uh, all, all your uh, your work on this and and uh, your your good answers to our questions. Thank you. Anytime. Thank you. Um, um, I'm really really uncomfortable right now. I think I might need to like shut down and go downstairs. Yeah. I'm just looking at trees. I'm right underneath the ceiling. Um, let's let's keep Steph happy and alive. Can I re can I just go downstairs and then come back on? Yep. So maybe I'll hand someone over the chair. The um. Uh, you can hand it over Arlo to or me. Bonnie. Yeah. One of yeah. Yeah. What, both of us or one of us. Yeah, that'd be great, Steph. Okay, I'll give it to you, Bonnie. Well, I guess one of the the good things about the Collins farm area is we've got uh, uh, hills on almost all sides uh, protecting us from uh, prevailing winds most of the time, he says, knocking on wood. So 
so we can chat. <laughs> well, my power lines are hanging by a thread at the moment. I've been <laughs> trying to get an electrician in all morning to fix it. <gasps> the hydro won't come out and I'm like, oh, the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Anybody recommend electrician that'll come and like reattach power lines to the house? It's the guide wire that's that's like popped off. You see yeah. how much I know about it. <laughs> There's a, a local um, a guy named Jake, and I can't remember his last name. He went to uh, uh, um, preschool with my son. Okay. <laughs> so he, he's... He's not an old timer, but uh, uh, if I uh, if his last name comes to me in this conversation, I'll let you know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, we actually are live on YouTube. Yeah. There we go. Great. Well, maybe um, Will, I, Chair, I'm just wondering yeah. if I could continue on with the staff updates. Um, I, excellent. Okay, and I think I might make an abridged and maybe some suggestions for deferral because there's certain yep. items that aren't uh, time sensitive. Yep. Um, but what I would like to do here is just um, talk briefly. So this would be a preliminary discussion about the Grafton Lakes lands, which yep. um, soon um, will become municipal land um, around the lake uh, through subdivision. Um, and there has just been a, a bit of concern um, moving forward, you know, I envision coming up with a plan um, with respect to usage of the lands and the water of Grafton Lake Nature Reserve. Um, like, for example, uh, dogs, no dogs, dogs on leash, dogs not on leash, um, horses, uh, swimming, no swimming, fishing, no fishing, like, lots of different things to work out. And I think the Parks and Trails Committee will be working on um, helping staff develop uh, some sort of management plan for the area. Excellent. Moving forward with some consultation with the public and all sorts of things. So, but there are some environmental um, issues. And I think as a first step, Carla and Sophie have done some work on um, creating some signage that we can put up around the lake. Just, um, you know, just to, to let people know that it is our, our drinking water protection area. And um, so can you see my screen? Um, yep. Everybody? Yeah. So just for the time being, uh, we're going to put up a, a few signs around the lake, just reminding people that it is our drinking water protection area and the frog, it ain't easy being clean and then also um, hop lightly. So um, those are two signs that we are going to in a few, yeah, we'll have four of them around different particular areas around the, the lake for the time being. Um, moving forward though, as I say, there's lots of work to be done over the next year. And um, I will be coming back periodically um, to the committee for some support or, you know, to weigh in on some some issues that directly um, may relate to environmental concerns. Yep. So, yeah. one, one, one thought too might be, uh, uh, we have McKaylee on, uh, on board and uh, she's got, uh, got expertise in this, this area too. So um, maybe uh, we could, uh, when necessary, have a, a, a little subcommittee with McKaylee and uh, maybe Jeff and maybe me uh, on it to assist you. I'd be happy to help anytime, Bonnie. That's great. Um, I just wanted to thank you, McKaylee. Um, I just wanted to get some feedback from the committee though about these two signs. Um, yeah. um, do you, would you like to see added wording on them? Um, how do you feel in general about them? We're open to amending the signs, editing the signs. Frog footprints don't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cute. <laughs> the, 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 
good point, Michaeli. Uh, <laughs> there's uh, uh, there's a, a really nice uh, P Peterson's uh, field guide to animal footprints that uh, has have uh, nice uh, samples of, of frog and toad uh, 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 footprints too. Um, th the other thing that comes to mind about those those signs is um, there might be some future signs needing a little more detail, like what does tread lightly mean? Uh, you know, and so uh, uh, things about uh, um, dog feces, um, um, uh, garbage, that kind of thing, yeah. not, not being left, you know, take it out with you, that kind of thing. Yeah, and, and, and for sure, Will, like I know, like there's lots of things to figure out. And I think this is just a first step just to sort of bring yeah. awareness to it. But there's many issues like yeah. that to figure out. And we have to be careful. We don't want to inundate the whole nature reserve with the signage, yeah. like don't do this, don't do this. So we have to be really careful. And there's a lot to think totally about. Totally understood. Yeah. And, and, and I know there's some of us have expertise in that stuff, that area too. Very good. But, I see our counselors are the ones that are well behaved and don't jump in like I do, uh, and both have their hands up. Uh, um, uh, Maureen and then David. Uh, thanks, thanks, Will. Um, I I like the signs. I I think they're um, I think they're attractive. I think they're they're well done. I don't think they're enough. And I in putting up. The friendly frog signs. I I think you're inviting some criticism for not taking the water protection uh, issue as, as seriously as as you might. And I know that that's not true, but I think that you might get that feedback. Um, although there may be lots of things that need to get sorted out, there are some things that are absolutely known at this point. There's not supposed to be swimming. There's not supposed to be dog feces. There's not supposed to be campfires, uh, you know, even if it's like th three or four things that got put on a companion sign. I, I don't think you should mess with the existing sign, but I think you need, you need another sign that is a little bit more directive to people and, and that possibly spells out consequences. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. However, there hasn't been, like there isn't no swimming. So, I mean, when it's private lands, people have to, like right now, people are trespassing to get to the water. But there's nothing, that's something, do we want swimming or do we not? There isn't anywhere that you can point to at this time saying there's no swimming in Grafton Lake. So that's what I mean about there's a bigger discussion or, or decisions to be made um, about that dog feces. Um, so, you know, would that, you know, say, you know, Personally, perhaps my personal opinion is maybe that would be an area that dogs may unleash. Well, if we say that, then you negate dog feces, but we would have to change the dog bylaw. So there's implement, impl um, you know, impl implications to the decisions. Um, so that's why we started just, just right now. I totally know we need other, other um, signage. Um, so what that signage says, I don't know. We have to be careful because we, we also have to make rules or bylaws or signage that can be enforced. So there's, that was my problem with it. So initially just coming up with a blanket sign, I want to see more too, but that's part of the management plan. So this is where I'm a bit caught. So if it's coming on the stream as a municipal park, it's a, a nature reserve. Do we not have bylaws that relate to municipal parks? Well, we could, yeah. So our public places bylaw that was just, just adopted, for example, we could put signage up that says no swimming, right? And if we had signage that said no swimming, then we can enforce that if people are swimming under the public places bylaw. But is that something the community wants? And I would think, you know, maybe, maybe they do, but that decision right now, there's nothing to point to that. So we could put up no, um, you know, no swimming. But I think that that's a decision um, that has to be made. And that's why I was thinking through public consultation. It could be a big deal. There's all those little bits and pieces that have to be figured out and then decisions made. I would be more inclined to go to council for those decisions 
put together a list of protection mechanisms and, and then you put the signage up and then it can be enforced. So right now that decision, it would be a staff decision saying no swimming. And I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. So this is, this is, this is the, there's, I wanna see protection of our water resource for sure, but there's implications, subtle implications of putting signage up. Okay, thanks Bonnie for the explanation. Whatever we end up doing, I think it needs to be done pretty quickly. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I agree. I, 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 just to, to follow, I, I'm sorry, I'm jumping in on, on David and, and uh, uh, McKaylee, but I, I, I support um, uh, Maureen strongly on this because um, if it's open, if the park is opened uh, without that clarification, um, it's going to be so much harder to uh, uh, get those um, uh, rules uh, enforced and, and agreed with by the community uh, if they've yeah. already been uh, walking in the park, uh, swimming in the park and letting their dogs go to the bathroom in the park. So, uh, I, yeah. yeah, I think, you know, maybe the committee, I, you know, we can defer some of the items. I mean, this is an important yeah. discussion. Maybe the committee wants to make some recommendations or we want to wait till maybe our December meeting to make some recommendations like the committee, the environment committee um, recommends no, no swimming um, signage. Or, you know, maybe we can think about that, um, that dogs on leash within the, the nature park. You know, we could make as a committee those recommendations to council. Yep. And to, to streamline this, I, I suggest that uh, subcommittee of uh, McKaylee, um, uh, Bonnie, Jeff, and, and maybe me, um, to meet a little later and, and, and work on that? Would that work? Does that work for you, Bonnie? So maybe between now and our next December meeting, we could yeah. we could do that and come back with some recommendations for the committee. Is that yeah. what you're thinking? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the people that I volunteered, is that okay? <laughs> Jeff, I can't see you. Yes, I'm happy to. I'm happy to participate. I, I do wonder though if this is under the is this under the purview of the parks and, and greenways, perhaps? It, it, it's there's overlap. I think we're we're looking from an environmental perspective and protection of our water resources. So I do feel it's within our purview. Okay. 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 And uh, David. Thank you, Will. And uh, I was going the same direction as Maureen, but um, a great discussion. Uh, so thank you for raising those points, Bonnie, it's really interesting. Um, I'm sort of thinking a little bit about what's within our purview in terms of protecting the environment. I mean, we're talking about public health here, but anyway, um, I, I like the signs, but um, I, the words were um, water protection area. Is that what it was? I forget. Is that what it is, Bonnie, water protection area? Drinking water protection area. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's better than I thought, yeah. I mean, I, I, the whole island is a drinking water protection area in many ways. I mean, this, I guess I was thinking, like it's basically the lake is drinking water, folks. Um, something that was a little stronger in that direction. Um, but I'll, I'll just leave that for now because we're lo <clears throat> looking into whether we need an array of stronger signs. I, 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 I take Maureen's point right at the beginning. You're saying something, but you're not quite, so people are aware that something's there, something's expected of them here, but they're not quite sure what. You know? Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, for but, sure. Everybody knows that if a lake is, a, that you drink out of a lake, you have to be careful with it. So making that point really clear that the lake is drinking water is important. And I'm not sure what that means in terms of changing the sign. Maybe it's making it a bit stronger in some way. Visually so sure. yeah, so definitely open to suggestions. And this came about because Vancouver Coastal Health had received a complaint or a couple of complaints about um, people concerned about drinking water reservoir, right? Grafton Lake. So um, they were saying in the interim, if we could put up some signage, just identifying that it's a drinking water protection area, that they would feel better about that. Not that 
you know, they, yeah, yeah they realize there's implications for um, whatever signage that we may, may or may not want to put around the lake. Um, but um, so it was kind of at their urging, um, you know, there's examples out there around, you know, that other municipalities use. Uh, we were trying to sort of balance our, our frogs. And one thing that they brought up Vancouver Coastal Health is like people that don't, that are from the island and go walking around the trails, that it just is sort of an education piece to start. So, but I'm definitely, we're both, Carla and I would be completely open to changes to the signage. I, I just don't know if we want to go really heavy handed or if we want to, you know, make it a bit stronger wording. I'm not sure I'm kind of blanking on that right now, or if we want to have, you know, incorporate our branding somehow as well. So yeah. I'm open to suggestions and feedback. Yeah. And yeah, help. Well, 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 a quick one is your frog saying what David said is, I drink this water, so do you protect the water. So that's the frog saying that. Something like that. Yeah, just drinking water protection area. It's as I, my comment was whole island is a drinking water protection area yeah. Um, yeah. in many ways. And there's all kinds of things about that, about making sure the water has time to drain into the cracks in the rocks and all that sort of stuff. But this is the actual lake is drinking water. It's a, yeah. bit, it's a bit of a stronger message somehow. Yeah. yeah, and I think the frog could be the one saying that just to keep it that, uh, that lightness. Um, and uh, McKaylee, you've uh, had your hand up, but your arm must be getting really tired. Thank you for waiting. No problem. I, I wanted also to add that maybe the frog alluding to the fact that the water treatment plant doesn't necessarily preclude the need to be care careful. Um, there could be an attitude now where, well, the water is treated. It doesn't really matter so much. You know, we can treat it how we want. It's be, the water is being treated afterwards. So I think there needs to be some education in that area as well. That water treatment doesn't necessarily remove all the toxins that that people have the propensity to add to water. Um, I wanted to suggest one area that we could add that additional signage or additional educational materials would be that kiosk that's gone up near the entrance of the lake. I don't know if there's additional room there for maybe some, some materials that can go there. A um, couple of thoughts on the educational materials. I would really like to have some discussion around sunscreen and the ingredients in sunscreen sunbathers that um, then are swimming in the lake probably don't realize how toxic that stuff can be, that many sunscreens are actually banned in um, several countries because of the detriment or the, the um, die off that they're causing to corals. Um, not that there's coral growing in the lake, but the fact that we have red-legged frogs, which is an endangered species in that lake is, is kind of a critical thing. Um, and then maybe another thing that we should look at is instead of instead of banning swimming, um, maybe changing people's uh, mindset about the swimming in that area. So changing the sunscreens and what makes what makes swimming there so toxic, um, as well as you know providing um, um, pit toilets or whatever, um, so that the behavior changes and we're still able to enjoy the park that we we want to be able to enjoy. Thank you, Bailey. Any more discussion, Bonnie? So what we can do is we will um, look at the signage and maybe send out some revised signage to the committee before the next meeting. Um, uh, or at the next meeting, depending when our next meeting is, but definitely work on that and strengthening the message. Um, yeah, and, and go from there. Is Perfect. everybody like everybody likes the incorporation of the frogs somehow? I guess the theme. I've yeah. always loved okay. them frogs. Yeah, I like the frog too, um, for sure. So yeah, so we'll come up with some stronger language. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Bonnie, one, one thing that I found very useful is instead of uh, the words um, no swimming, if, if, if that's one of the things you want to say, the, the icon of a swimmer with the circle and the line through them. 
says yes. that. Oh, so without, right now, uh, like the intent, so I guess, you know, we can come up as a subcommittee and talk about all the little details yeah. and I can provide what that means for staff and staff time um, in bylaw yeah. changes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. but that's a separate, so I think is the committee, does the committee agree that as a stopgap, as a as a immediate action that we could put up some signage similar to what I presented today, but with some stronger wording? Is that something that the committee agrees upon? Okay. So we'll work on that and then the subcommittee committee we can we can talk about the details. Great, Bonnie. Like, yeah. Great. And uh, thank you for, for the, the creative approach there that you're, you're using. It's great. Okay, so um, Bonnie, are we uh, going on to 5.2, uh, the work plan? So I guess, uh, Chair Will, um, yeah. I just see how much uh, we're, I guess we're finishing at, at one. So I've got the ECAC work plan. I made the edits yeah. Um, yeah. from last time. Yep. I'm wondering if maybe, I don't know what, what you think as a committee, it's gonna take some time to, Go through it or we could look at it or we could I could send it out I know it came as a late item yep. um, to the committee yep. I, I think Carla and I captured everything that was discussed last yep. time might be might be wrong about that yep. but um, would that be okay how yep. do you feel um, should I send it out and just have the committee it, look at it I think that would be the best meeting? time to you know it, it, it will be actually quicker to do it that way than uh, us um, wade through it so I, I think so okay yeah we've we've definitely incorporated just some highlights a sustainability tour like we talked about um yep. climate action and then also the implementation looking do a, doing a review of our climate action strategy uh two times next year i do hope to update the, the strategy okay. next year as well and then also um the other item which was really really great is uh glennis from uh, Saanich. They have the climate action, community climate action handbook. And Carl and I met with Glynis last week. And so I think that's something Carl and I can put together um, and put out um, next year in 2022 um, with the committee's uh, help, um, endorsement and edits. So that's incorporated into the work plan as well. And other than that, there were items that were carried over. There's still a couple of climate conversations um, that would happen. And I think that that was about the, yeah, oh, the scope good. of the changes. Great, yeah. thank you, Bonnie. Um, Bonnie, may I, may I ask, you, you, did you indicate that you had sent it, we had received it as a late item? Oh, I, I sent it to Steph this morning. Sorry, I received yeah. it late and there's, um, yes. as I mentioned, some other dramas going on. So let me forward that on. Sorry. That's perfect. Thank you, Steph. Sorry for the lateness of that. <coughs> um, Bonnie, do you want to talk about 5.3 or is that uh, going to be covered in? I, in I think maybe. I think maybe we could defer that item, Will, if okay. that's, um, yep. we've put together a list of the quick wins in the, yep. but I really believe we need to allot quite a bit of time to that, yep. to look how we could implement them. But it leads into the 5.4 item, yep. where there is one quick win that I'm hoping that maybe the committee could endorse or recommend that an allotment of $5,000 be included in the 2022 budget. Um, for the purchase of a e-bike um, as identified in the climate action strategy. Um, my question, because I know we have a couple of e-bike experts on the, on the committee, is if 5,000 is, you know, the discussions I've had with e-bike users, I, I think we could get a fairly good e-bike for that amount of money, but I'm open yeah. to adjusting that amount. Um, yeah. David has his hand up. He's one of those experts. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I, my first thought is you don't you need three thousand, not five. Uh, I, I've done a bunch of work helping people get bikes, but it depends on the use exactly. So, do you need it to be sort of off-road stuff, or is it just sort of on-road? What? 
tell me a bit bit about yeah. the Matthews. And, and do you need the transport stuff with it? Yeah. Yeah, I think some trail use. I mean, maybe it would be going around Grafton Lake. I would see it maybe not going on our, yeah, um, some trail use and definitely down in the cove. Um, sure, I'd say sort of leave it at 5,000 bucks. I, I, you know, if you're, if it was just on roads, the kind of stuff that I do, then, you know, 3,300 is plenty. Uh, but uh, I don't know, I can't answer about off road stuff. I don't know. I've never researched those. So I'm yeah. happy with the five. You can get a good bike for five, that's for sure. Definitely. I, I, and if, if, uh, if you want to have, have one that can carry some, some equipment and people, um, that you can still get it in, in a $5,000 package, I think. So uh, I, I move uh, that, uh, oh, is there any more uh, discussion from the rest of the commu committee? One Jeff? question for me is, you know, Bonnie, what what sorts of um, activities would this um, be used that would displace the use of a, a gasoline vehicle? Definitely um, could do parking patrols. Um, by law, could do parking patrols in the cove. Um, and also we could do some park patrol like in Grafton Lake, as I said, if we come up with signage. Um, so those are two uses I, I see. Um, and for education purposes, you know, going and talking to the community um, as well from an environment perspective, you know, just going down on a busy day with the e-bike and chatting, um, promoting our, our transportation network and our, yeah, connectivity of trails and such. I'm going I to, go ahead, David. Yeah, well, Maureen put her hand up, but I just oh, yeah, sorry. I think Jeff made a really good point. Is is it we we should say make it a little stronger than that? It's not just a bike to hang around municipal hall. Someone can use it if they kind of feel like it. Um, it's it's to displace. It's to you know when you're doing bylaw work or whatever it might be. It's to use that rather than a car um, when it's appropriate. And so it's I think it's it's to displace a car. It's not just to have a cool thing around the house. Yeah. And Maureen? Uh, would it be used for ferry marshalling purposes when we have the responsibility on some weekends? That's a really good, really good point because I know that when we have one person doing ferry marshalling, it's hard for them to get up and down, they're running. Yeah, so you know, that that is a potential. I mean, that is contractors that would be utilizing a municipal asset. So I'd have to look at that aspect of it, but I, I think that that is a good idea. Yeah, it would be a safer alternative than the car zipping back and forth because that got a little hairy yes. on, a, on a few occasions. The, the other point is, is um, not directly related to this recommendation, but just this is gonna bring up the question again of when will the um, electric vehicle charging station be put in place because it's been in a box for a while. So when it comes to council, ideally we should have some sort of answer to that. Yeah, and so I can I check the in with points. The transportation committee will be discussing that at the next meeting. Good. Thanks. Patrick. Okay. With so, Patrick. With Patrick. Excellent. Thanks. Did I see your hand up, Don? You're muted. If 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 you uh, did have something to say. Okay. I'm. One of the things I'm doing is zooming across on on the bottom of my iPad, and the hands uh, appear and disappear uh, kind of at random. So it looks like we. Uh, we're, we're ready for the motion. I'd like to make that motion as uh, uh, put down on uh, in the uh, uh, agenda. Do we have a seconder? Here, I'll second. Oops. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Looks unanimous. Jeff, are you uh, in favor? In favor, yep. Yep, okay. 
All right, so that's unanimous. So well done, Bonnie. Well, it's it was in the it was in the climate action strategy. So good good yeah. work, everybody, yeah. to get it in there as a quick win. Quick win, yeah. Mm. Yep. So uh, we've got uh, fifty for uh, less than fifteen minutes. Can we uh, move on to staff updates? Sure. I don't have lots to report. I just uh, just if, if anybody missed um, Jeff's good presentation and uh, the pesticide bylaw did receive first reading. Uh, well done. Eighth. Yeah, and so we're going to move forward with a public um, information session, um, date yet to be determined, but uh, hopefully get that done soon. And yeah. Will you need and committee support on that, Bonnie? I, I think it would help to have yep. committee, and I'll, I'll definitely reach out to committee members. Great. Um, and Biff's has already reached out to me and said they're available to help with that as well, so that's really good. Um, and then Mount Gardner, um, non-motorized, um, I'm going to be writing a letter, which will be sent to the Minister of um, uh, Recreational Sites and Trails um, uh, manager as well, uh, for um, to reiterate the stance of Council on um, the prohibition, desired prohibition of uh, motorized non-recreational, non-recreational, or recreational uh, vehicles on Mount Gardner. Yeah. So that's, that's it for staff updates. Okay. And subcommittee updates. Do we have any? I don't think so. All right. And now new business, high impact strategies and policies. Don, are you around? I am. So um, Don, a, um, what did I do? You, you kind of uh, were a smart plug to get this initiative going where um, you, you uh, have brought a number of things to uh, the, the committee's attention about things that, that uh, we could be doing. And, and one of the things that uh, I also uh, did was uh, follow up on David's uh, many helpful uh, um, connections to... Uh, things that are going on in uh, BC and uh, Greater Vancouver. The, um, I think one of the, the key ones for me was the, um, I'll just see if I can pull it up. Uh, uh, David, the, um, I, the, um, the carbon, um, uh, system in what was that in nelson that report yeah uh, embodied, embodied energy yeah in yes nelson. yeah uh a revelation. In the agenda package that's yeah, in the agenda yeah. yeah yes thank you um a revelation for me uh um i i i saw the uh the video uh of the presentation that uh it, to the in the link that you uh set had a lot of really good stuff in it. Um, and so I, I'm thinking that uh, uh, next committee meeting, uh, we should have uh, uh, a half hour to discuss that and, and those other documents that, uh, that you've uh, highlighted from uh, Metro Vancouver. I don't know if the committee has had a chance to look at those, uh, but I think it's, um, uh, there's a lot of, of uh, uh, initiatives that Bowen Island could be uh, tagging on to, to uh, increase our uh, um, march towards. <coughs> Don, do you, do you have some uh, things to say? Oh, you're muted if you're. Uh... Can you hear me now? Yep. Is, is that better? Uh, yep. My, uh, you know, if I have uh, probably just an apology for sending you 600 slides from Al Gore and uh, from a PowerPoint deck that he presented uh, in front of COP26 and then some subsequent presentations that were part of COP26. And again, I think it's, you know, if you have time to look at some of them, uh, it would be, I think, beneficial to 
to have another discussion another time about some of that material and content and how it may apply to Bowen. Yep. And, and David, um, can you talk a little bit about the embodied uh, carbon sure. that uh, I, I think is so important to, and, and uh, there's some big opportunities uh, for our community to, to um, use that concept. Yeah, I, what surprised me about that, and, and interesting is Alison Morris is the one who sent me the link. So I thank Alison a lot. Oh, well, well, well and, done. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's two things. Is one is I assumed that the embodied energy would be only small compared to the ongoing emissions. And it, when you did, I did a bunch of math and figured it out. Oh, it's, it's a big chunk. And the yeah. second thing was it doesn't correlate to expense necessarily. That, you know, it's just finding the right materials. And um, <clears throat> so that was really interesting. But also in the, um, in the Metro Vancouver roadmap, uh, the buildings roadmap. So I would direct you to strategy four, which is accelerate the transition to lower embodied emissions in buildings. Yep. And then there's several things under that, um, which involve uh, getting a regional working group um, to, um, uh, you know, to figure that one out and make recommendations and some you know, the municipalities could create procurement policies and so on. So there's a bunch of stuff from the Metro Vancouver roadmap that I think we could dump into our, uh, our actions around yeah. embodied emissions. We've got all kinds of construction going on um, and we're going to have all kinds of renovations going on. Um, it would sure be great if we had some sort of simple list of, okay, here are the different kinds of concrete, um, here are the different, you know, well, I could go on and on, insulation yeah. and so on. Um, so it's that was pretty interesting. A whole bunch of new information for me, which I really found it was fun to find out about. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, one one of the things I was thinking is uh, um, even partnering with the the Bowen Building Center to um, uh, ensure that uh, they stock some of those uh, materials. You know. It's generally, you know, if I needed um, insulation, I'd just go and get whatever they had. Exactly. But if uh, if they uh, uh, had uh, the option of, of saying, well, we've got this and it's much better and costs the same. Yeah, um, yeah that's so, a great, great idea, Will. Yeah. So I, I think um, uh, <clears throat> for the future, uh, we, we should form a, a subcommittee to comb those four documents, the, 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 the three uh, uh, roadmaps that, that you've uh, um, connected us with and uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Nelson uh, uh, embodied uh, energy uh, uh, document. I think uh, uh, we, we could have a, a bunch of recommendations that would be uh, um, uh, low effort uh, for, for staff because we'd have it there you know, that we could hand it to Bonnie and, and uh, Carla. And, um, uh, you know, we, we might take initiatives to work with the building center and other, uh, others uh, to, uh, um, to, to make it easier for, for um, builders and uh, citizens to, uh, to, to make those moves. Bonnie. So that tangible action is exactly what I'm looking for when I update the climate or when we update yep. the climate action, because, for example, we want to improve efficiency of buildings. Um, well, we need to have because so much of the stuff that we are, uh, it's outside our sphere of influence, really, a lot of it. So we want those tangible items like the e-bike, because e going through the strategy and, you know, siphoning out the, the quick wins wonderful, wonderful ideals to work towards. Yep. How are we going to do that? Like, even if it's these little things like have an outreach, do some outreach with the building center, you know, like just these yep. are the type of items because looking through that, I'm like, okay, how are we going to do that? How are we going to bring it into yep. action? So, yeah. So that, those things I yep. like, those are just doable yep. things. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and we, we might be able to do some of this in some committees so that it gets done faster than, uh, uh, than than our our uh, uh, monthly or or, or or less often uh, uh, meetings of the whole group. So uh, and and we've got some some really good expertise on this committee. So I mean, I'd be happy to be part of a of a, a subcommittee like that. One of the points that um, so I did a bunch of work with Metro Vancouver before I was on council 
um, and when they were developing the plans and so on. And one of the things that they really, that the, the, the head uh, really insisted is that this be a, a document that stays open because things are going to change. Yeah. You know, the provincial government, they've just announced their new plan, which has got some new things in it that's pretty important. The feds are changing their plan. So these and you know technologies are coming coming along, and places like Nelson are doing a bunch of interesting work. All stuff that we wasn't there just a short while ago. So it our document has to stay open to opportunities. But uh, I really take Bonnie's point is we need things that are really actionable from a staff level. Uh, um, yeah. yeah, and and, and um, as much as we we want to help. Uh, uh, staff like Bonnie and Carla rather than pile stuff onto you. Uh, uh, so uh, I think we can do that. We, we can be, be, uh, be, be helpful rather than uh, um, just the shovelers of, of extra stuff. So I think that's uh, that. Any more discussion on, on that? I think uh, um, we can start. I, I, I advise anybody that hasn't had a chance to uh, at least skim through those documents that David has uh, brought to our attention uh, um, to do that. And, and um, we, we'd be uh, ready to, to, uh, to, to, to form a subcommittee and start going. So uh, now I, I think I saw Don do a quick, uh, I, I have to, it, this is so, in cumbersome when I'm doing it on uh, on an iPad. Uh, Don is happy to help. I think uh, Michaela yep. is happy to help. Um, yeah, Michaela as well. Yeah. So uh, we, we could form that uh, committee right now. Um, David, Michaela, Don, and, and I'd, I'd like to help too. I'm happy to start anytime. Okay, so maybe um, David, you, you've got the most uh, experience with this. Would you like to lead on, on this? Sure, happy to, yeah. So um, uh, we could start on, on uh, when, when David uh, calls us, uh, emails us or texts us or what? Sure, I, my only worry is I've got a new um, um, consulting contract that's about to start um, and I haven't got the details yet. I'm expecting it today, tomorrow, yeah. uh, which might burn my energy up a bit, but. Yep. Um, well, uh, then you can pass the baton to, to the rest of us if, if needed. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll, um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get going on that. I'll call it, I'll pull the four of us together for a meeting and yep. um, um, it just give me a day or two to figure out what my, what my time's gonna be like. Perfect, yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, I think that's um, that's all uh, the agenda had. Is, is if I'm, uh, I think that's it. So um, shall we move to adjourn? All right. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thanks. Really, really interesting discussion on, on an array of topics today. Yeah. It's a great meeting. Yeah. 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 This is a great committee. I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks all. Thanks.